what's going on, advocates? Welcome back to another edition of the Black Mental Health Podcast. I'm your host, Reg. Joined today with me is a very special guest uh, doing a lot of work. This is a celebrity, man. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure I, I, I got caught him uh, when I could because very busy man doing the work, though, in, all, in true honesty and, and, and healing our community, but which we'll get into. I don't introduce anybody finds. I let people introduce themselves, get all their credentials and all the things that they worked hard for out to the people. Facts, facts. What's going on, good brother? Alfonso Nathan, also known as Fonzo Therapist. I am a licensed professional counselor. Um, I am the vice president of a counseling, private counseling uh, practice, Brightside Counseling, uh, co-owner of Brightside Medical Associates. Um, I do everything, everything in the mental health field, man. I've been, I've been in private practice since the age of 25. Um, and this is what going on what 10 years now me being in the private sector and wow. it's, been, it's been an amazing it's been an amazing uh run um when i initially started uh if people don't know my story um you know I, I was doing very well for myself uh in private practice and but something was missing i mean i was making a lot of money you know i was chilling but there was something about what was going on i just wasn't really i just wasn't really liking so um I realized after going looking on a meme on Instagram and it said, uh, black people go to jail, white people go to therapy. Mm. And that hit me hard because then I looked on my caseload and the majority of people that I seen, none of them look like me. So right. that's when I realized, man, I'm part of the problem. So that's why I after that, I've made a cognitive effort to utilize my resources, my time and my effort to make sure we break the stigma um, in our black and brown communities by joining organizations like the best organization right here, Black Men Heal, <laughs> right? Um, and, and some other organization as well. And, and to continue to uh, push, you know, break the stigma for mental health in the black and brown communities. Um, got some books coming out, a docu-series coming out. We'll talk about all that, but yes, yeah, a little bit about me, man. So I got to Anytime I get the therapist in the room where the people that we stay connected to and it's like I see fines in passing. We always see each other at different spaces, but I don't I don't know fines. So mm -hmm. let's go back before the 10 years. Who was fines before he became a therapist and why did he go into private practice? Oh, man. Fines was a wild boy. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I was you know, I was a college football player um, trying to find my way. I, I was doing music as well, still trying to find my way. But the thing is, ever since I was younger, um, I realized I gave great advice. People mm -hmm. always came to me, I was a great listener. I, have, I always had a really good spirit. And there was a quote by uh, this famous artist, legendary artist, Pablo Picasso. And he said, the meaning of life is to find your gift, but the purpose of life is to give that gift away. Mm -hmm. And um, something I couldn't hide. And any any avenue I went, I was always that person giving that great advice. From, from I did network marketing back in the day, I was a personal trainer. Um, you know, I, everything I did, um, people always came to me for advice. So it was only right for me to, to go into this field. You know, um, I went to this boarding school called um, Milton Hershey School. Um, and that was another reason why I knew that interventions can change lives because it changed my life. You know, you said two things and I want to make sure I don't I lose them. So you could have chose anything that as your medium of like, all right, this is the way that I want to do it. Why would you hone in on uh, therapy? And I think you just answered it. And then what was that experience that sent you to boarding school in the first place that you had to like, you know, redefine yourself? Absolutely. Um, Milton Hershey School was is a um, school for underprivileged youth. I was um, I came from you know, um, not good beginnings from Staten Island, New York, um, you know, in the 90s, I was like during, you know, the crack right. epidemic, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wu-Tang Clan, if Shaolin, that's where I, where I grew up at. And um, it just wasn't a, the right environment for for um, anyone, mm -hmm. but for myself who had so much potential, I was, I was a very intelligent kid. I was supposed to skip the fourth grade. Um, I guess it got to the point where you know, I just wasn't challenged in school because the curriculum was trash and I was just being a class clown and just making jokes and like, you know, um, just getting, you know, getting a little bit of trouble. And it wasn't until a point where my, you know, myself and my mom, we had a sit down 
because it just, you know, it was during middle school because it just, it just wasn't working. So um, I had family that, that was already in Miller Hershey school. So I knew yeah. about the, the boarding school. So I made that decision. I'm like, this is the same, the same, the same working for me. So, um, you know, in eighth grade, I went to, to the boarding schools, which is a Hershey PA. So I went from, you know, the city, yeah, the city, like concrete jungle to a farmland. And that yeah. was a big culture shock, but, um, it was the best thing that happened for me because, um, it, it, uh, it allowed me to got me out of my environment and it helped cultivate, you know, who I am right now, mm. you know, so. And, and the second part of that question is, is what made you pick like the, the there you could have been the the rapper you could have been like why why hone in on this one yeah it it just it just couldn't i couldn't escape it mm. that's the main thing and you know from 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 doing anything from doing anything um in my in my career it always went down to me giving good advice and mm -hmm. you know um when i decided to go for my master my uh my graduate degree um you know i was the only black male in my whole program mm. and i saw there was a need you know um i still i was gonna stand out as well and you know uh, even from my, my my beginning time as just like a you know entry level type of therapeutic support staff it it just clicked to me you know mm. what i mean you know i had a i was doing one-on-one -on -one work with you know behavior kids kids on the spectrum um kids that just had some really bad behavioral problems but the thing is they were misunderstood because I, I understood that i was misunderstood so I, I I understood what the kids were, were were dealing with. So I I listened to them, and I excelled. So it, it's it was only right for me to to continue to pursue, um, you know this this uh this passion of mine, this gift of mine, to this most optimal level, which was in private practice. Um, and it it's it's been so helpful. Now I've helped out. I know thousands upon thousands of people from pro athletes to YouTubers to just regular folk, you know, and I, and I, since I've been doing it for so long, I see the results so mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that's the most rewarding thing, you know, money, money, you know, money comes and goes, you know, I'm full, I'm very fortunate enough to make sure, you know, I'm good and all my kids are, are well off. And, but the most rewarding thing is, you know, seeing that kid or that person who, you know, they, they were just lost. They, you know, they were about to kill themselves, all these different things. And now seeing them being full functioning members of society and excelling and doing amazing things. And that's, that's one of the most, uh, that's one of the most rewarding things of being in this field that, you know, I will always love and I'll always do. You spoke on earlier, keeping it in the realms of kids, um, the conversation you and your mom had in uh, about doing the uh, going to the boarding school. Now that you look back on a therapeutic uh, way of how it, it it worked for you as a therapist, now what? How do you, how does a parent uh, have that conversation with their child in a in a, condu a conducive way so that way they can you know consider it as an option? Because I know a lot of parents are struggling with certain things and they're like, I right, I got to do something and this may be my only option. Yeah, uh, it's all about having that relationship with your child. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a mama's boy, so mm -hmm. I've always had a good relationship with my mother. Um, but, you know, I've always been ahead of my time. I've always been, you know, um, like I'm very, you know, uh, I, I think a lot. So so I've already I already knew that my environment wasn't the, the best environment for me. Um, I just had to be comfortable um, with with speaking that with my mom, because, you know, uh, um, you know, my mom would miss me, I would miss my mom. So mm -hmm. so it's about having that, that clear communication, and just knowing that, you know, this is for the greater good, which, mm -hmm. which, I mean, it definitely was, you know, that was definitely, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy of the, the path that that I've took, I've taken. Mm -hmm. Nah, and and speaking of that, so ten years in the game, ten years, you know, in in private practice and doing what what you're doing. Uh, what are the uh, how has mental health changed since when you first started to how is it now? Oh, me mental health has changed a lot. You know, lot, lot, right now people are more willing to, t to say that they have a therapist in the beginning it was a taboo thing you know it was just like you know you you didn't want to say you were in therapy now people are proud like yo this is my therapist y'all like oh like oh is this is this cool because because you know you know because confidentiality is a big thing you know so that's the hard thing about a therapist like 
we, you know, some people want to know I'm, I, um, that I'm their therapist. Some people don't. So I always have to kind of keep that in the back of my mind. But yeah, so in the beginning, you know, people didn't want to, you know, know that they, people were in therapy. Um, also, just the telehealth portion of it, um, telehealth just started popping, you know, really popping since the pandemic. Mm. Um, you know, so a lot of the times the the sessions were done in office and that, that provides just a limited area where you can be able to practice so now with telehealth you know i can be able to talk with people all over the u.s now mm. and um you know so that it's really expanded and just again the push for just breaking that stigma so i see a lot uh, you know i see a lot more black and brown brothers and sisters um so, you know since my initial start um and it's it's just constantly growing and evolving and and it's being into something that i know us as therapists you know dreamed of and that's having it being in the same respect as physical health because mm -hmm. we all know mental health needed to be in the same um the same category as physical health but society didn't a lot of times we they swept it under the rug but in reality if you sweep something under the rug it's still there and they mm. keep on sweeping things on the rug, you just gonna trip over these things. So, mm. so um now we're actually, you know, taking the things from under the rug and and really clearing it up. So um I I, I know all, all my therapist colleagues are, are very happy. We're very busy, but we're 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 happy how things are going. Uh one of the questions I had, you're the perfect person so I, to ask because I always ask uh the therapist when I get a chance because I just want to get the the collective solution on it. So one of the things you said was uh, people, it transitioned to more people being accepting of it, right? Yeah. This is a system that was already overwhelmed. Like you already were, you know, bottled down with, you know, not even be able to see all your caseload or having that, whatever the case may be, you know more than I do. Yeah. Now more people are aware and the, the increase in providers didn't increase all of a sudden, like it's still overwhelmed. And one of the things we talk about uh, amongst each other is how, uh, and, and I'll say to you, cause you know, Taz was, would say like, are we do almost doing a disservice because we're encouraging people to go, but then they may find like a struggle within the system to find the healing that they're looking for. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a great question. That that's, that's something that we struggle with all the time, but, um, what this also does, this, this also brings representation. It also brings awareness of people who are, who are graduating and people who are, um, trying to find a, a um, career that they can really um, value and can be lucrative and can just be, you know, just be a great career. Um, now, I would say probably in the next two or three years, it's gonna be, it'll be better. I think right now it, it is it is a tough situation, but i rather this, you know, i rather it being that, you know, people are are more aware of the the mental health piece and um, then, then people are, you know, just ignoring it, you know? Um, the I don't think anybody really knows the full answer of how we can you know grasp this mental health pandemic um, because it just hit us two years ago. Um, but I tell you what, you know, there's you know there's dozens and dozens of people that reach out to me um, that that are switching fields and wanting to get into therapy, that are um, trying to see what they can do to kind of help with um, with this stigma, which can be a little murky thing because um, I also had people would hit me up that because mental health is a um, hot topic, um, we also have people that go into this field for the wrong reasons. And it, do it does a lot more hurt than, than help. I had somebody hit me up in my DMs a little bit ago. It was like, hey, what's going on? I wanna know if you can um, you know, help promote me. I'm trying to help people out. I'm a professional listener. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm mean, that's a, that's a new that's a new title. I was like, well, I was like, well, let me let me see what you got. So he sent me his price sheet. It was like five dollars for five minutes, thirty dollars for thirty minutes. I'm like, that's I'm like, that's interesting. I was like, what's your background? You know, what's your educational background? How long you've been doing therapy? He was like, oh, I don't have any um, history of that. I just been sober for thirty days, and I think I can help people. <laughs> I was like, and that's where it starts getting murky. You know what I mean? Where people who who are who are seeing the need and and people who are desperate to get help and now they're getting swindled. I call, I, 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 oh, I call oh, the oh, mental health swindler. Oh, oh, hold on. Don't go into it because I was going to go for you to get that. I, I had that ready for you. I had that queued up to, oh. to go because I wanted you to expound on it because I'm sure it's 
you was trying to get everything into that one minute. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I want to make sure you expound on it. So uh, go ahead and I'll I'll let the video play and then you can expound on it. (laughs) Uh, Come on. Don't do I must have clicked on somebody's name. Oh, Oh, there we go. Come on, get the mental health from my experience so we can help break this stigma. I really want to process with you using therapeutic techniques so we can help you heal and you can improve on your mental health. Okay, let's get started. I want to set some realistic goals with you so we can really help improve your quality of life. Life. even though I never went to school for therapy. The only answers that you're going to hear from me is narcissist, imposter syndrome, and trauma, because those words sound like I know what I'm talking about. Bottom line, I just want your money. I want to talk to you guys about the importance of mental health. So before you explain it, because I know it's some people that's listening, and you can go into each uh of the different layers that you were sharing and they, they're not watching the video. They're just listening. But I also wanted to share from my perspective, that was one of the reasons why I started this podcast. And I was the, I want to say almost starting out as the mental health swindler. Mm. And then I was like, I don't have to do that. Like, I don't have to do that. I can get the therapist to come on. I can share their experiences. I'm in school now. They're going to school to try to get some of the education. So I did start off with mm. on the, the swindler role. And then I'm like, let me transition into more of a mental health professional role, which I still don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that's a therapist. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like for me, but I'm learning uh, as I grow. So please explain it to the people that's listening, what you were, you, the message you wanted people to receive. So the message was, and it, and I, I, if people who um, follow me, they, they know I started doing a lot of humor, but putting, putting reality, you know, putting message under the humor. Um, a lot of times because mental health, is new it's like the wild wild west a lot of lines get to be is a little blurry and get a little murky so uh, you know for the people who are trying to seek out help it's important to know each person's role and each person's role is very important the mental health advocate is is an individual who is trying to again to who's trying to break down the stigma for mental health they're trying to to push push that narrative and 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 talking about it through their own experience you know about the importance of mental health that's an that's an important piece mental health advocates like like yourself like Taraji like 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 uh you know D D Reed you know all those Charlemagne are, yeah Charlemagne those are those are individuals that's that has you know that's going to help with that representation to talk about it you know, uh, so that's a really important role. Then, then we have the, the therapist who who's helping these individuals through therapeutic techniques. You know, this is an individual that been to went to school for you know over six six in six plus years post you know high school plus you know supervisory at least two years supervision. You know, there's a lot of work that's being done to make sure that we are effectively helping you with your your needs for improvement behavior. You know, and because and that's an important piece because you know there are individuals who want to die, want to kill themselves, or or um, you know just are in a the, not in the right mindset. And if you improperly guide them in a certain direction, that can cause more detriment. So that's that's the therapist role. Then the life coach, which which is which is another amazing role. These are individuals who are helping, giving you life goals. You know, giving you you know, standard goals so you can help improve your quality of life. You know, individuals who like, you know, um, they're trying to transition to a new job. They're trying to transition from high school to college or college to the real world. Life changes. That's not fully, you know, you know, that therapeutic, like not dealing with bipolar, but you know, if you're just lost, right? So that's that role. And then the swindlers are the ones that, that are just using mental health to, buy, to sell their products. Mm. I know a couple of people that I've seen online, you know, they have nothing to do with mental health, but because of mental health awareness month, they, they put mental health in there and then like, you know, buy my shampoo for mental health. Like what? Because it's going to help with the algorithm and it's going to help get more eyes. And uh, my, my publishers was telling me this, you know, a while ago um, when, when, when they bid on, you know, certain interviews, certain situations, a lot of her, 
her colleagues who have, you know, clients who aren't even in the mental health field, they're pushing them toward to these interviews and things like that, just because they're, they're talking about their experience of mental health. So it, it, it kind of makes it murky. And, and I was, I wanted to bring awareness to that before it gets too out of hand, you know, cause I've had clients, you know, you know, um, be swindled and come to me and they have such a bad taste of therapy in their mouth because somebody was trying to give them services, but they were out of their scope of practice or out of their lane. And, and now you have to do double work because now you they have to buy back into therapy and now you got to work on it. So, so it just makes individuals like myself and some other, and other therapists have to do double work because my job is to work myself out of a job. I'm not here to be with you every single week for, for 10 years. That's not, that's not what it is. I want, I'm, I got to give you skills and things necessary so you can be able to function outside on your own without me. And you can check in with me. I have no problem checking in, but you, I shouldn't be with you every single week for, for 10 years. So, so it makes my job a lot harder and it makes me, I have to work with a certain client a lot longer, which also takes away from the spots of other people who are also trying to seek help from me. So it, it's, it creates a backup. And and it's and it's not right. And um, I'm going to continue pushing that narrative because um, I want people to know that you can be able to, you know, help in this field, but you just have to know what you're capable of doing. Yeah, man. And I started in 2018 after like realizing I had multiple suicide attempts and wanted to share my story because I once I started doing Googling and research, I'm like, it's not a lot of white people that, you know, share this this information. Mm -hmm. And then ironically enough, I bump into Black Hill. So I started the podcast in 2018, like maybe July. I meet Taz and I'm in, two, in, in August. And so ever since then, I'm locked in. Mind you, I was in the first cohort. And so I got the therapy and then I realized the difference between everything. Yeah. And that's when I wanted to like, you know, spread awareness by yeah. collectively having it. Yeah, that's perfect. Because, because the thing is not, we need individuals like you for people to feel comfortable to see individuals like me, because mm. maybe be some people that's like, I don't know about going to, you know, going to therapist, but then they go on your podcast and they're hearing it. They're listening like, you know what, let me, let me just try out a session on. I tell people on, on these 15 minutes of your time. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we got that, then we locked in and we going to work on what you got, what we got to uh, work on. So so you play an important part in the whole machine of helping others. And so so that's what people just have to realize that, you know, it, it's everybody plays a part. I'm not going to go and prescribe medication because I am not qualified to prescribe medication. That's not my, my scope of practice. You know what I mean? Um, so everybody knows the, the everybody should know the lane that they're in. No, nah, and that's the other part. And I kind of I'm, I'm staying here a little bit because I do want to unpack a lot of that because I think people get so confused with all of these different things. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it I think when so I'll speak from my space where when I'm starting in a, 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 a field, if I'm not the player on the field or whatever the case may be, you feel like you're insignificant to the championship yeah. and of healing. That's and I guess that's what it is. That's the goal for everyone is healing. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not a therapist in this field of mental health, then I'm I'm not I would never be able to compete, quote unquote, with a fines because he's that he's that person. He went and got the credential. So it, it, it gained a little bitterism on my end. And again, starting out, I gained a little bit of bitterism on my end. And I'm like what you said, I, that takes a process of coming to that thought of like we're all playing a, a important component in the journey of healing. Absolutely. So I, that's a great example. Um, you know, I, I give a lot of football references because football was my life. So, you know, not everybody going to be on the field at once. And you might have that fourth string person that has to take mental reps. We always tell the coach always say you got to take some mental reps because you got to see what you want to do. But also what you know, whenever whenever the, the, the play happens, what, what, what did they tell the sideline to do? Pass, run, pass. Right. You become that 12th, that 12th member on the field. Right. You you do what you can do to help the people on the field. Mm -hmm. So 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 there is no just waiting and, and just not doing anything. Everybody plays a part like, you know, you, you, you're on the practice squad. You, you make sure you do. You have to do what you do to to get the uh, the starters ready. But while you're doing that, you're gaining experience because mm -hmm. you're going up against against a starter. Right. So so it just helps that that team to continue to get better because not everybody again, I wasn't 
you know, um, at my therapeutic best when I initially started, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I, it took time and experience and picking the brains of, of, of older therapists and, and, you know, to, to be able to help me cultivate what I can do now. Mm. So, so, you know, it's never too late to get back, to get into this field. You know, this field is, is, is still in its infancy, especially for the black and brown population, you know, which it, it's, it's still in the infancy. So there's more than enough time to be able to, to, to go and get that, that degree. And again, there, there's different routes to do so. I mean, you know, you could be a therapist, you could be a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I pushed for that for a lot of people. I didn't know what that was until, until uh, later on in life, I would have did that psychiatric nurse practitioner, whoever's listening. Talk to me. No, you go into that. What's the talk to me, the benefits or why you so, think that's one need to be pushed a lot more. So a psychiatric nurse practitioner um, is a is a master's level nurse um, um, in the psychiatric field. Um, what's special about them is that they have what we call prescriptive authority. They're able to prescribe medications. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, we have a psychiatrist who, you know, they, you know, you go to med school and, and, you know, it's a lot of years. And then you have your psychiatric nurse practitioners who can, who can also prescribe the medication, but <clears throat> instead of going to med school for, you know, eight to 10, 12 years, you get your RN, you get your BSN, then you get your MSN, which is, which, you know, you know, probably takes, you know, for wait for your BSN, either you do four years of, of um, undergrad or you do a, a bridge program, but then your MSN is just two years. And then, then you have the ability to give a pre prescriptive authority. So, um, you know, it's another, it's another, um, 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 uh, uh, role that you can play as prescribing medication, but you don't have to, if you don't want to go to school for that long to be a psychiatrist, you can still have that role as a, as a psychiatric nurse practitioner is where a lot of companies are hiring, hiring psychiatric nurse practitioners because they're more, a little more affordable. Um, but they, they give great work under the supervision of a psychiatrist. Yeah. No, thank you for that. Cause I didn't even consider, again, I'm still developing my role. I had a therapist friend tell me like, yeah. I'm so focused on finding what my role is that he like, you might be, you need to settle in the uncomfortability of what you're already in that role. And you thinking it's something else that you're supposed to be attaining to. So <laughs> I'll leave that there for anybody that's listening. But I, one last thing I want to ask you on that, because again, um, with the swindlers, uh, one of the things that I had to learn for myself was uh, that I needed to get more education around uh, this topic because it is a serious thing. And one of the things that I didn't want and I still don't want on my hands is someone committing suicide or, or dying by suicide because of something that I did or did not do. And that's a heavy thing, a heavy responsibility. So I salute to everybody that went to school to handle those situations. But the question in that is, how do we prevent the swindlers in this space or minimize their impact on the culture? just awareness I went like what I, what I just did with, with us taught having this conversation you know what I mean and a lot of times people aren't aware that they're swindling you know some mm -hmm. people who are doing a malintent but some people just kind of grow into that role so you you just again it's having these conversations knowing you know knowing the different roles in this in this field because there's there's more than enough people who would like to seek help but you got to realize how comfortable you are with being able to help help out somebody you know what I mean? You know, there, there's certain levels, you know what I mean? Like if you feel comfortable with just dealing with anxiety, that's your niche, then, then, then you cultivate that. Mm -hmm. um, and as you grow, as you want to learn, then, then that, that happens, but there's no shortcut in this. And that's, that's what I, I have to stress. <clears throat> it, it, it's, you know, even, even me being in private practice that early, you know what I mean? It's because even earlier on, I was doing I was doing a therapeutic boot camp. Meaning, mm. I, was I was doing family based therapy. I was doing um, I was doing behavior BHRS services. I was doing a lot of therapeutic services, as well as getting like mentored daily, mentored by my my. He's my best friend now, my and my business partner. You know, I was getting mentored every single day on how to cultivate and, and sharpen my skills. So, so, um, just know that it just, it takes that time. It, it, there's no, there's no short, there's really no shortcut in, in this type of situation. Um, you just, you, you just need that experience. You need, you need to be able to, uh, understand how this, how this goes. So. 
No, nah, and I, I definitely want to stay right there because you did talk about building your private practice and being in that space and, and you know, learning and still learning and growing. Talk yeah. about the what people don't know about building a private practice or give them a little bit of a taste of what they would get if they join your practice. But just like the building of the behind the scenes, because it ain't easy running some a business. So talk about the the, the building of it. Absolutely. It is. It is not, man. Um, people people. What happens in when you go to grad school, they teach you just about the therapy and they don't teach you about the business of it. Mm. They just say, you know, all right, this is how you you deal with mental health, but they don't. And you know, they don't tell you about, you know, running a business, but in 85, 90 percent of people with a psychology degree, they, they their ultimate goal is to be in private practice. Mm. But no part of our curriculum talks about uh, talks about how to run it, talks about how to get your referrals, how to you know form an LLC um, to see if, if, it's, if you're if your company's big enough to get an S corporation um, to talk about taxes being being taken out to talk about um you know you know um your office space and all these things that that you have to learn outside of school um i actually wrote a book with my business partner on on how to obtain a successful private practice um just because these are little just tips that i think is just needed if you're trying to be successful in this field because the, the, they don't see the background. People, people just see like, okay, you, you know, as soon as I graduate, I'm going to get a bunch of clients just out of nowhere. And I'm going to sit on a computer and, uh, and I'm just going to listen to them and I'm going to get money. And at the end of the day, that's, that's not the case. You know, it, it, it takes about, it's understanding this is a business of people too. So a lot of times, um, a lot of private practices fail because uh, us as helpers, we have we have a bleeding heart. So <clears throat> sometimes people, you know, want to barter. Like, okay, you know, um, you know, how about can we just do it for twenty, you know, twenty dollars and and I give you a t shirt, and <laughs> like I and it just doesn't work like that. You know, what I mean, I, I try to put the same, you know, to help me feel better. It's like surgeons save lives and they get paid a lot of money, right? You know, and you know these brain, you know these these brain doctors, these neurologists, all these people are getting are getting you know getting a good amount of money while still saving lives. So, so why does a therapist have to get the short end of the stick? Mm -hmm. So you can still save lives and still feed your family, but you just got to be able to do it, um, you know, appropriately, um, ethically, and and do it so you don't burn out. I put the book up up there for y'all who's watching and um, I'll put the link to find stuff in the chat so that or in the description. So y'all be able to get the book, the practice, uh, practice success. So uh, I'm not actually going to buy for myself. Just again, I'm just trying to get the knowledge, brother, just to get <laughs> get all of that. Listen, I've been you can hit me up anytime, brother. <laughs> you can, you can, you can. I've been reading the DSM five. I know the new version came out just again to get that knowledge um and, and be able to have that information to spread to the people and have conversations like this so that way a lot of the times i know people interviewing and they they they're still figuring out the basic stuff i'm like no fine it's a deeper level that you probably know stuff in that i'm not even going Absolutely. waste your time to ask you the, the basics so how do people deal with anxiety you done said that 50 million times google <laughs> it fines probably got it up there already yeah i'm yeah, getting yeah. into the deeper stuff that i know fines got in his brain yeah, that's facts. That's facts. <laughs> no, no, but that, that's facts, though, because I mean, yeah, like, because I mean, you know, I'll talk about anxiety as much as possible, depression, you know. But you know, this, this, these are stuff that people need to talk, need to hear about, because um, I just think it's important and it's, you know, it's overlooked. And my goal is to make sure mental health continues to stay in people's minds and not just be a trend. Mm -hmm. and a, a dying trend it needs to be just like hey you know you, you work out today did you, did you eat today yo did you go you know you seeing a therapist you doing this like it needs to be in that type of light and um you know so i'm glad where we're at right now i just want to make sure it stays that way and, and and you know people don't get burnt out about it but people know the the importance of of what we're trying to do you bring up an important point and I, I almost forgot and it's been on my mind to start asking the therapist about this and and what their opinion is, uh, is about this thing um people individuals weaponizing mental health and not the mental health swindlers but the people on the recipient recipient end and they're using it trying mm -hmm. to be respectful as uh, a right. weapon 
as an excuse, <laughs> as a rut, as a crutch. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that those people need to need to be um, called out as well, because what it does is just dilutes and waters down the 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 effectiveness and importance of, you know, really looking at mental health, because, you know, if we're just using mental health as an excuse for everything, then people are just going to be like the boy who cried wolf. It's like, eh, you know, what I mean, everybody's saying mental health, you know, what I mean, I, you know, people can talk about the Ben Simmons situation, you know, um, Kanye, Con, you know, Kanye, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Kanye, he, he, I love him to death. That's a, you know, he's a great brother. Um, you know, so I could say about that, you know, he, he's, you know, he's, he's dealing with, he's dealing with things, you know, he got as rich people problems as well. So I, <laughs> I, I can't even, I'm not going to say that I know exactly what he's dealing with because I know the stresses of what I, what I deal with, with, with running what I'm doing. I can, and he's doing a hundred times. So, mm-hmm. You know, so people people have to understand that, you know, there's this book that I read called uh, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And it said, seek first to understand then to be understood. So so I look at that as, you know, before I give my, you know, my two cents, I try to understand where somebody's coming from, try to understand, you know, where they're at and, you know, why they're thinking the way they're thinking. So. Um, but yeah, to your question with uh, do, is, is there a concern for that? That's a, that's a big concern for me. Um, with with people using that as an excuse and um, uh, I hope that we just continue calling people out for that and and but just also knowing that the people some people are doing what they're doing because of mental health um, so we'll see that's that's the sad part about it because the two individuals you the Kanye and the Ben Simmons there could be something really mentally there but mm-hmm. it gets uh, amplified in a way where that the, their struggle may get lost in the amplification of it, like of what they're actually going through and stuff like that. Exactly. And I, and I do feel like, and mind you, I have to check in with myself sometimes with everything is, even though I may see it, because as a therapist, you may see mental health in everything, right? Yeah. But that don't mean everything is mental health. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I learned early on to keep my comments to myself. So, because like when you're first, when you're, you know, first therapist, you, not, like you ever seen the the Matrix, right? Mm-hmm. Remember when Neo first became the one, and he started seeing all the numbers and everything. Like he can he could see the Matrix. After like something clicks for as being a therapist, you could just start seeing everything like everywhere. That. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you know, so, and then like people don't people aren't ready to hear that. You know what I mean? If I have a, if I see a kid, I'm like, hey, your kid might have ADHD or autism. Like that that they're gonna feel offended. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So until they're ready to to come to me and ask my two my my thoughts on it, that's when I'll I'll respond. But I see, you know, I see mental health and everything, but because we all have a little something, little ADHD, little little bipolar depression, you know what I mean? But unless it interferes with your daily living, that's when, you know, that's when it needs to be talked about. But mm-hmm. One of the uh, questions I have for you, and this was on a personal note, how because you said it, the how do you turn therapists off as a dad and a husband when you can see certain things and you want to apply certain things in the in your household, but you can't be therapy fines, you got to be daddy fines or husband fines. <laughs> well, my wife's in the mental health field too, so she's she's a psychiatric nurse. She's about to be a nurse, a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So she 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 checks me on it. She's like, nigga, don't therapize me. I'm like, you right, you right. <laughs> My bad, my bad. Um, and then my my kids, cause like I talk how I talk. So like a lot of my lectures, they they already heard before. Like my son, you know, he heard all my my stories and my lectures. So um I so I just take a moment and just, you know, just let him know that he's a kid. You know, it's 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 not easy being, you know, the the son of a of a of a therapist because sometimes I have to catch myself. Sometimes you have to you have to make sure that you're taking time for them and having them feel that they're that they are first in line than your clients because mm. you know, you know, a lot of times I'm giving myself my energy, my time to a lot of people. So I want to make sure my kids always know that they're top priority. So so there's a couple of times my son, my son's like, so do, do you know, you know, I would like to go here, but I know you might have some clients and that's okay. I'm like, nope, no, nah, that's mm-hmm. no, let's let's go here. And because you know, I'm 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 busy and you know, I, I always have to remind myself um that, that that they do come first and um and that's and and that, that's it's been working so well you know what i mean so no great uh because that's something i think we all uh especially as men have to learn of like i'm doing it for my family i'm doing it for my family 
And then they'd be like, but where's the family in this? You lose the doing it for your family. <laughs> That's nice. The, the gift and curse of an ambitious man, you know, it's it's sometimes you got to take a step back. You know, um, you know, me and my wife, we, we, we always have some great conversations to see where we're at, make sure that we're constantly, at, you know, on some on the similar levels, you know. And, you know, we're checking in, you know, cause um, you know, that's my, she's my, that's my backbone. That's my, that's my lid. So, you know, she, you know, I always have to make sure that she knows where I'm going, my thoughts. And she, the good part is that she allows me to, you know, push for those things. You know, she never questions, you know, my, my ideas and stuff like that. Cause I'll be having some out the wall ideas, but then, but it, it makes sense after a while, you know? So, um, so we have a really good relationship with that. So, and also my kids, they they all they're all understanding. My my daughter, she's she's growing up, you know, as a daughter of a therapist, so she's understanding as well. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about healing the culture. Absolutely, healing the culture is, is a is a docu series project that I'm very um, proud about. Um, it's a fly on the wall. It's like a fly on the wall of being in a therapy session. Um, a lot of times people don't go to therapy because they don't know what it looks like and mm-hmm. they have a negative connotation on what therapy is. So um, what what we did was having that therapy session with because representation matters with um, some influencers, with some sports figures mm-hmm. and really have a sit down and allow these men to show that vulnerability, show that they're human and allow the audience to know that, hey, if this person is going through this, you know, then, and he's seeking help, I can, I can go and, and get some help as well. Mm. Um, you know, I'm very, I'm very proud of the, the men that initially, um, that's doing the docuseries, and we have a lot of other um, individuals that's, that's, that's waiting to get, get filmed, um, but right now we have, we have this uh um this 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 uh rapper uh who's an influencer now um from Philly and he he talked about coming back from gun violence you know he was shot nine times and and just coming back from from being shot nine times in the in the hood PTSD mm. so, so a lot of a lot of individuals in Philly you know they know about getting shot they know about individuals who who were shot and just talking about that, just that negative cycle that that happens. So it's so it grasps that type that audience. And then we have a a comedian um, from back in the day. He was he was um he was a, he was affiliated with like Will Smith and and in Def Comedy Jam. Um, and he talked about how his career kind of just you know um, took a nosedive after being falsely accused of of um, of a sexual assault as well as um, dealing with alcoholism. And talking about his second chance and how to, how he's battling alcoholism to get back on stage and be the funny man again. Mm. We have um my, one of my brothers. He's a you know he's a former Seattle Seahawk and um, um former San Francisco 49er. Um, and talks about life after sports mm. and, and and how a lot of you know athletes, especially football players, they, they you know after they play you know their sport, they kind of lose a good portion of the identity. Mm. And so trying to find a new identity, a new purpose, and it can be very depressing. It can be very um, challenging. Uh, and so they're, they're, these are really good stories, especially my, my, my brother from um, my brother from uh, uh, the, the NFL talked about, you know, he's he's from um, he went to Penn State. So mm. he talked about the whole Jerry Sandusky mm. situation. Uh, you know, with with the, with the Seahawks about, you know, some situations with Pete Carroll mm. and, um, you know, some other stuff I can't, I can't. Ruin. Can't share yet. Don't worry, yeah. it's going to get clipped out when it, yeah. when it debut. I'm like, yeah. yep, he already spoke on it a lot of his yeah. hair, so here yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, we're actually, we're actually about to, um, and this could be clipped out too, we're actually going to be ta- going Good Day Philadelphia to talk about it. I think the 24th, we're going to be talking about the healing the culture situation. But yeah, so it's 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 um it's a great docu series because um it, it, again right now it's targeting black men because black men we are a population that that needs therapy the most but we seek it the least mm. and um I think that in order to heal the culture we got to hear our black men and because you know we are we are part, we are a main part of the culture um and I've seen it I've seen it in the pandemic. And coming out of the pandemic, how so many people are hurt and what 
what people don't realize coming out of the pandemic, you know, this was trauma for everybody, but people overlook how the pandemic really affected the inner city because when we were quarantined, they made everybody stay home. And for a lot of kids, mm. school was their refuge. School was their source of where they got food, where they got safety. Now they're trapped inside a house with a perpetrator, an abuser, um, la lack of food, um, violence, and they're there for two years. Mm. And then we lift it and then we tell them, all right, go ahead and go outside. And then wonder why the killings have been up. Wondering why there's nothing but just hostility there. Because there's been individuals who've been traumatized, not only from before the pandemic, but during the pandemic, and no help has, has been has 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 happened. So I think it's important to bring awareness to that, that um, you know, people are very happy that, you know, the, you know, we're the pandemic is being a little bit looser and, and but it really affected it's gonna affect us from for years to come because every single kid they're gonna do a study on this i'm telling you right now they're gonna do a study on this that every single kid is at least two years behind socially mm. um, because of the pandemic so seventh graders are acting like fifth graders fifth graders acting like third graders and that's why a lot of the teachers are quitting because they're not used to dealing with the immaturity of mm. their new grades mm. No, and you said something that I didn't want to interrupt it because I felt like that was a good like train of thought you were on. But like even with the short thing of the pandemic, how impactful it was in Britain with the slavery point, they like, yeah, just you should be good. You're not slaves anymore. But it was trauma, 400 years of trauma. But even with these two years and they're not even looking at it. Exactly. Just like just forget about it. The pandemic happened already. But it's like, nah, like I'm, I'm still I still remember. I still remember being, you know, like they, they still remember being perpetrated, they still remember being, you know, like in a house where, you know, there's, there's 10 people in the house, hardly any food, nothing but just, just, you know, I'm supposed to be doing online schooling, but I, I Wi-Fi is trash. My, my mom's using, you know, my laptop for other things. And I got to watch my, I got to watch my, my, my little brother, my little cousin. Like people don't look at that. And they, they, these are the stories that, you know, that get overlooked. Mm. And, and again, we, then, then we started looking at the, the toll, the death tolls, like, oh man, it's crazy out here in Philly. It's crazy out here in Chicago. It's crazy out in these inner cities. Yeah. Because there's, you know, energy, the law of conservation of energy says energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only transfer. Mm. And if you transfer it in the wrong way, like if you don't have an outlet to transfer it, it's going to come out in a different way. And it's coming out with anger. It's coming out with these explosions. And that's what we're seeing out there. Do I have an answer? Um, I mean, I have a lot of theories, you know, provide more resources to um, our city, you know, um, make, have the kids do something. You know, idle times the devil's playground. You got to, you got too much time on your hands. You know, you're going to act out. You got to be busy. You know, I remember back in when I was in Staten Island, the summertime, the police athletic league would block off the street and then give all these board games and all like a, a free summer camp. Mm -hmm. It was free. But what it did was from 8 a.m. To, to 5 p.m., it kept the kids busy. And that helped with so much reducing crime reducing just us doing dumb things because you have something to look forward to something simple as that mm. I, I i do I, I you had me thinking about the pile like that's around my mom house and i was like damn we used to play basketball there and then i'm like well what happened to that but now as an adult i'm like why haven't i tried to figure that out of like what happened or what's going on why did it stop and, and that, it caught me in my train of thought just now <laughs> Yeah, but I'm saying what happened to those things? It kept it kept you busy. The thing is, the people who who cause the who get who get in trouble the most <clears throat> are the one are the individuals who have the most time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you're not playing sports, if you're not do, like you have nothing to do, what what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to try to do something interesting. And a lot of times for kids' age, interesting is doing something that you're breaking rules you're not supposed to do. So, you know, that's so why I'm, I'm very proud of my, my brother, Gary, 
you know, um, who's who's the Seattle Seahawk. Um, he's doing this this program called the Bridge, yeah. and and you know he'll talk about it. But it's it, he they they pretty much take a an old abandoned building and they remodel it, restructure it, and make it into an eco village where where um, it's you know where they can be able to have affordable living, have activities, have all these different things inside, um, you know, areas where there, there's no programs, there's no, there's their food deserts and all these things. We need, we need more programs like that to help with our kids. So they're not killing each other. Mm. I, I was going to ask you, which you probably just did it. Did you have any final words, any thoughts you want to leave the people with any programs you want to promote? Like just giving people something to, you know, takeaways with them. Absolutely. Always remember to protect your energy and invest in your mental wealth. I got another book coming out called Not Worth My Energy. Hmm. Um, ways to, you know, um, deal with anxiety and learn how to be your most optimal self. So I'm a big believer of energy. You know, um, you know, we that's what we all are. And um, anger, anxiety, depression, it's all the energy. Um, and if you know how to deal with it, it's not going to take over your life. So, um, so it's important to protect your energy and not, not waste your energy on emotional vampires. Those are people who's just been negative for so long. They suck the energy from you to fuel themselves. So, um, you know, protect your energy guys and make sure you guys check out the docuseries it's coming soon. Um, I can't contractually talk about where it's going to be um, yet, but just check on my page. Um, on Pfizer therapist, Pfizer therapist on Instagram or on pfizertherapist.com. Um, anybody who needs help mentally, mental help, mental health uh, services, check out Brightside Counseling, Brightside Medical Associates, Black Men Heal. Um, shout out to shout out to Black Men Heal. Shout out to the Boris Henson Foundation, the Coma Project, Dr. Alfie. Um, those are all um, some organizations that I'm I'm a part of that I'm proud of, and um, it helps it's helping our people. And um, yeah. Now, I thank you, brother, for coming on, especially squeezing me in during Mental Health Awareness Month, because this will be out maybe in a week or two. So I definitely want to make sure we eat, we highlight all the work that you're doing as a busy person that's healing our culture. So um, I appreciate you for coming on. And then please share something, share a clip of whatever Fine said that spoke to your heart. Share this, get his message out, get his his page, everything that he's doing. Share, like share this episode with somebody and leave a comment of something he said on Apple. Um, that, like, so to let people know when they're tuning into the conversation, what they're going to hear or what you liked about the episode. And finally, please remember that this platform has never been about being a replacement to therapy. It's an alternative place where people share therapeutic stories. Thank you for listening.